Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today is a very, very important day here on the World Record Reaction Series because today we are reacting to the one, the only, you've seen it about 17 billion times remade on every single platform imaginable, Skyrim. And we are watching the World Record gameplay for this with commendation. No, comment, it's comment, it's commentated. Comment. Comment it's commentated. It's a world record run that's commentated. And the reason that this is so important for Skyrim is I watched like two seconds of the non-commentated run, and it is one of the most confusing runs that I have no idea what's happening of all time. This is by Waz. I'll have his channel link down below in the description. Make sure y'all go check him out. He gave me permission to react to this because he's an absolute legend. And uh, he actually is going to be walking us through everything that goes on. So I'm going to be learning along with you guys just how crazy wonky and buggy skyrim actually is so without further hey everyone, ado and ladies and gentlemen the commentary of my here skyrim we go main quest speed run. so i see a lot of comments on my videos by people expressing confusion and generally just wondering what the hell is going on so i thought i'd do a play-by-play -play commentary Literally and hopefully me. help everyone better understand what's happening throughout the run before we start there's a few things worth noting the race i use is high elf is so the tallest and therefore the fastest okay so at the very beginning of the game when he's creating his character before he loads in he picks high elf because they're the tallest and that apparently affects speed the timing method used is in-game time meaning that the timer pauses for anything involving loading so okay. the times are comparable despite varying hardware yeah uh, real time is still tracked though and still relevant and the difficulty used is novice since it's the fastest Oh, makes There's sense. also a few things banned in all runs, mods and console commands for obvious reasons. Uh, changing the game speed to be based on frame rate, and a glitch known as text glitch, which lets you skip through conversations faster. And the reason it's banned is because we don't know of any way to trigger it, besides just leaving the game open for a really long time. So with Wait, that's so weird that they actually like specifically banned a glitch because you have to have your PC open with a game open for like days or something. That's insane. I mean, it makes sense that it would be banned, and I would prefer that, personally, if I were a runner. But that's insane that it's actually banned when it's in an inner, any percent run, that's you know that, what I mean? start the run. All right, here we go. Timing begins when I gain control of the character and camera. Straight away, I'll activate infinite sprint glitch by sprinting, quick saving, releasing sprint, and quick loading, all in quick succession. This locks me into the sprint animation, giving me not only infinite stamina, but also letting me swim, jump, and do almost anything outside of combat while sprinting which leads to some pretty awesome parkour, as you can see here. He's already that out. quick save there He's is actually out. the save I'll be using to continue the run from. The reason I'm going down here to the exit of Helgen Cave is to set up a glitch, a save for a glitch, known as Load Warp. A Load Warp is where you open the pause menu right as you trigger a loading zone, interrupting the area transition. The screen will fade to black, but the pause menu will still be open and the game paused. You can then scroll down through the pause menu, exit the main menu, and any save you load from the main menu, it will take that save and that character and put them through the loading zone you just interrupted. So now I'm making a save with unbound hands and a bucket, and then going back to the load warp save. It's a pretty precise timing. I get it second try, I think. Uh, so I'll move forward, open the pause menu, exit the main menu, and now I'll load the save with the unbound hands and the bucket and skip the whole of Helgen Cave, saving about a minute. What? <gasps> Wait, that tutorial takes so long and he just skipped all of it? That's actually insane. So you might notice insane. a bit of a stammer in the sound or the fact I'm able to move immediately after every loading screen. That's a trick called fade and skip. And all it is is quick saving and quick loading during the roughly one second black screen fade in, which clears the screen and lets me move immediately. You might so, also notice I jump a lot throughout the run, like right now. It actually saves a surprisingly large amount when going up or downhill. And it also allows more sense. direct pathing by jumping over obstacles. So every single time you see a black screen, he's saving now, the and then loading on purpose. Up here at is the same to steal time. A horse and set up a glitch known as horse tilting. Horse tilting takes advantage of Skyrim's broken horse physics. Oh my god, this is going to be insane. By a horse off of a large rock or boulder, causing it to cling to the vertical rock face and sink down towards the ground. If you get off at the right time during the sinking animation, it will propel your character off the saddle side to side at a crazy fast rate. The reason this is useful is because speed carries over through third person saves. Meaning if I load one while flying off the saddle, I'll be going at a ridiculous speed, which as you can imagine is very useful for a speed run. Okay, so so just to, just to catch back up with what he was doing while he was saying that, he ran far enough to hit a trigger of some kind, immediately ran backwards, 
and then waited an hour and then a, a thief with a horse apparently spawns there at that certain time after hitting a certain trigger so he knew to do that to get this horse to do whatever this glitches which i assume is going to be absolutely wild because the horses in this game are some of the funniest vehicles of all time i'm not kidding this so is i need to save incredible. up in the valley there quick save i'll fly off the horse using the glitch and then load that save and now i'm going super fast and the first use of this, I'll use to discover High Hrothgar and Dragon's Reach. There's High Hrothgar. <laughs> and now I need to land in this river for Dragon's Reach. <laughs> I actually had a bit of lag there, and that locked my forward input, which means I went way too far back. And then I had to, like, improvise and salvage it. <laughs> I need to discover this farm over here, Battleborn Farm. For later on, uh, tilting to Mazark and getting the Elder Scroll, and conveniently this guard's right in front of it, so I can just punch him in the face right as I discover it and warp to Dragon's Reach. You have committed crimes. Okay, so when he's saying discovering locations, the reason he's doing that is he wants the ability to fast travel there later, and then he's gonna hit the White Run guard, and uh, he now has the option of submitting or going to prison. He's not actually scheduled to be there too, which is funny. Uh, the first time you go to the outside of Whiterun, all the guards will be in, like, fairly unique locations. So it's a really nice little efficiency there. This next tilt's the Throat of the World. This is by far the most difficult one. I need a huge amount of speed to get all the way up. A lot of these tilts at first are just that to discover horse. locations to fast travel to later on in the run when I'm doing the actual questing. So this is like a series of checkpoints to gain height. Uh, Unlike when you're on a horse, it's pretty hard to gain height on steep slopes on foot. So I'm trying to hit these sweet spots on the mountain that let me go upwards. This is a good spot right here. I can just wiggle my way up. Once I've got enough height out here, I can go around to the other side of the mountain and hit this slope here, which is a really good one. I can just shoot right up it. And now I'm almost at the top. I just need to get a little bit more height to get onto this ledge right here. I'll just sort of smash my face into the mountain to do so. And then we go through these rocks, and I'm at the top. So I discover Throw the World, and then swing around and head on to Riften Lake, where I'll be tilting to Septimus's outpost next. Bro. First I'll line up with Riften Stables, so that when I realign myself to be going forward, I'll shoot right through Riften Stables on my way to Septimus, discovering that in the process. He just got shot with an arrow as he was flying. He's gonna this one's get quite that. Difficult. Very high speed. So basically what he's doing, every time he loads the save with the horse, he's basically affecting his character, but not his main save. So he's using this horse save to every single time he wants to launch, he loads up this horse save and then whatever, and then he loads back into his normal save and his character maintains the momentum that he had in this horse save into his real save that he's beating the game with. Very far distance. Um... I'll use a bunch of visual cues. The first is College of Winterhold. I need to go just to the right of that, and then I'm going bird's eye view to try and land as close as I can to the cave. And that was pretty much perfect. Activ activating infinite sprint glitch again. Okay. There's also little bits of RNG throughout the run. This is one right here. 54% chance to steal the lexicon. I also take advantage of... The fact that if you crouch behind someone and they turn to face you, you'll still go hidden and stay hidden for about two seconds. Huh, so he, need, he needed that book right there. Now I'm going to get the Elder Scrolls since I have the lexicon. <laughs> this Bro. tilt's quite a bit easier. This game is so big, I don't even know what the requirements are for like beating it. There's just so like a middling hundreds sort of and hundreds of I things to, to even do. I fall damage on my way. Unfortunately, I go to the right, which means I have to reload the save. If I go left, I don't have to. That's like a three second difference. This is actually incredible. So I'm just like skimming across the landscape, making sure I don't take any fall damage, and then yeah. trying to finish as close as possible to Mazark. I, I have a this feeling you would clip. die. It's as easy as it looks. I'll literally just like crouch down, wedge myself into the wall, and with a good setup and a bit of luck, I'll just go right through. And you can just open up the load zone a little from bit outside. Of the lever. A tiny little bit that I can reach and open the way into Mazark. And then you have to do this puzzle. I remember doing this puzzle. <laughs> 
I wonder if he messed up right there. Okay. Puzzle done. And... I'm just looking at the grind here to get a visual cue to grab the Elder Scroll as far away as possible. Small optimization. Yeah, it saves like 0. 0.0001 no, seconds the there. Thing. But but hey, when you're going for the world record, it's worth it. Okay, so now he's using these checkpoints that he grabbed earlier. Just casually punching a horse my way in here. Uh, even if I could pay off the bounty here, I would still go to jail. I need the lockpick from going to jail to do a bender glitch coming up. First though, I'll use a wait and get Brynjolf to speak to me. That's just so I have a journal entry and a quest marker for Riften. And I can world map there much faster later on in the run. Here's Vendor Glitch. It's as simple as it looks. I'll just click and drag on my inventory, press E on the vendors. It opens the vendors inventory in sell mode. And I can just sell him his own stuff and get 1,200 gold. Okay, so he literally just used a glitch to trick the vendor into thinking that he was selling him items, but actually was giving him all of the money. That's so... <laughs> <laughs> now, even though horse tilting's a thing, I still want to use the carriage sometimes. Uh, tilting across the world, it's far too risky and probably saves any time anyway. So he's going to use this, like, fast travel system to reach a new location. Oh, so he's going to third person, so I think this I know what he's going to do. There's also quite a high risk of dying because I'm in the air so much. <laughs> So first I'll try and hit this so funny, lock, dude. sticking out here to reset my fall damage and then skim off the side of the hill to reset it again before trying to finish it directly above the cave. Okay. So he's not using any sort of load warp there, he's just going inside. This is one of my favorite parts here, a bit of Skyrim platforming. I I heard something. There's this puzzle you would normally have to do to lower the bridges and get up the Skyhaven Temple, but with some precise jumping I can just maneuver up there. Oh, this is sick. Wait, this is sick. That was so cool. Wait, is there more? Please tell oh, me there's more. That journal strat I was talking about. Uh, he's, Next, I'm off to the Thalmor the, Embassy. Uh, the, the reason I'm going there so soon is to loot a chest that has a quest item. This quest item will activate a quest about halfway through the main quest line, which skips a whole bunch of stuff like Bleak Falls Barrow, killing the dragon, and getting the horn of Jurgen Windcaller. So activating a certain quest early. Horse tilt to get up there. This is one of my favorite ones. It makes use of sideways tilting. <laughs> Every time the horse tilts happen, I get so Speed's hyped, not too dude. Important on this one. Okay. Oh. Fortunately, I go left. If I went right, I wouldn't have to reload. First, I'll go back and forward over Catless Farm to discover that, and then I'm mostly just going left and right, no, left and forward up these paths here for pause buffering to finish as close to here as I can where I'll do an object clip and there's the bucket all that is is just running into a bucket and going through a wall <laughs> Bethesda games <laughs> Bethesda games bro are you kidding me everything is used even the bucket is used from the very beginning here's the chest with the quest item so now I'm like halfway through the main quest and I have the elder scroll as well so I just need to get into the actual Questing part of it. That wait there's to move Shivari out of the way here. And also, it also gets her to open the gate for me. So he knows that at a certain time, that character is going to walk through that gate and open it so that he can slip in. Bro, the amount of optimization. The number of waits used in the run is actually very specific. Um, time schedule is really important for later in the run when I have to talk to Arn Gear and Jarl Balgruf. Every R, they're in a different position, and if they're in bed, it's really bad. They'll be at the far end of High Hrothgar, or the far end of Dragon's Reach, oh. whereas at just the right time, they'll be much nearer to the entrance. So they, so he has, to, he has to, like... Oh, he stole another bucket! He stole another bucket! <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. He, he literally is setting up for another bucket clip, and he has to manage the actual schedules of the characters in-game. Skyrim was so good for its time, man. I'm so excited mention. for Elder Scrolls. Uh, quick saving and quick looting is a very fast way of skipping dialogue in this game. So, like, right there, that whole line is just skipped by a quick save, quick load. And waiting is also a good way to advance NPCs 
through their various states and get them speaking sooner or get them where you need them to go dude literally a speedrunner's worst nightmare just having to stand there and not do anything look at him look so at him i'm actually doing a proper sprint here not infinite sprint this is because with infinite sprint you can't bump people and bumping is another way to skip dialogue it also what? kind of resets the state of the npc the drag no one can escape you're the prof we must so i'm bumping him again talk to him and now he's following me i can just <laughs> go back to the load warp save from before and load warp, load warp out of the route way open the pause menu going into the loading zone Oh, and I, I just now got it. So the so the save that he did at the very beginning of the game, the load warp one, whenever he wants to load warp into the end of a zone or just somewhere inside of a building or something, that's what he uses right there. He load warps out every time he loads that. The similar way that he, he loads up the horse save when he wants a lot of speed, he loads up the load warp save to get him out of places. That is so smart, Here's a really smart, cool trick dude. coming up. I guess you could call it a wrong warp. Uh, any save you load with a character that's stuck out of bounds in the overworld, the game will take that character and warp them to the default location of Sleeping Giant Inn in Riverwood, which just happens to be exactly where I need to go with Hesburn. So I'll get a ridiculous amount of speed here to break through the invisible barrier at the edge of the world. And then when I quick save and quick load, I'll end up in Sleeping Giant Inn. What? Are you I have to kidding go out here me? To get Esbern to show up, he kind of gets understandably lost throughout all this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what the heck, uh, Esbern? Uh, going You're not keeping up there. He's also huh? a way to advance NPCs and skip dialogue. I actually found a new method of duping right there in the middle of a run. I was just trying to grab a single bucket to use for a clip later on, but I noticed watching the run back that I had way more buckets than I should. So after some testing, it turns out you can just quick see of quick load and spam E on an object, and it'll give you three to five of the item. What? That's sort of the world fast travel, it's just a time schedule thing. One. Oh, I'm there he is! I'm going to open the big face door to Skyhaven Temple, and since it takes so long to open, I'll fast travel away and do something rather strange for a speedrun, which is arrange a marriage with Mercurio. <laughs> uh, the reason for this will become clear later, but the gist of it is, if you fail to attend your marriage, whether it's by warping out of the marriage or just too much time passing, this will prompt the game to enable player control, and that, in combination with another glitch, will let me enable control at the Dragon Run cutscene. Getting married any percent, dude. <laughs> but I'll go into more detail about that at the time. What? He just got engaged! I'll do a little trick here and fast travel away before the quest updates. This means the two-day timer on getting to my marriage doesn't begin until I've reached Skyhaven Temple. Dude! Essentially giving me three days. Attend your wedding ceremony. Is his, cur his current objective? This NPC interaction here is quite finicky. Um, all the waits and quick save quick loads are quite precisely timed to make sure when I reach them, they'll be at just the right stage in the dialogue. And now I'm going to duplicate Dragon Ban using- Bro, I don't know what buttons this guy uses for quick save and quick load, but he's literally got to be like, just quick save, quick load, like constantly method. during uh, this what run. What I do is hold it up in front of myself, drop it, and then alternately spam quick save and E to take it. The quick saves lag the game, which makes it give me multiple Dragon Bans. So he now has three of that sword. Now I'm just blitzing through the dialogue. I think normally Sky Young Temple- Oh, there's the dude he's getting married to! Take like five minutes, but- it's easy to manipulate NPCs in this game. Throat of the world. And throat of the world is the place that he already got the the play, the marker Another for. object clip here. We get into High Crothgar. The front doors are still locked because I skipped the part of the quest that unlocks the doors. Cool trick here, like a bit of an elevator. Um the textures out of bounds in Skyrim are really weird. A lot of them. Uh, so that one right there, if you jump into it with the right angle and the right height, it'll just push you upwards. Who the F is that? Where did you learn of that? They have all have you learned nothing from us? No. But heed my warning. No. It is called We do not regret this one. Only part of that. He lives in to us oh, this is where you get the dragon wren shout. I forgot about this. Bro, it's been so long since I played this game. So long. And to see it absolutely annihilated like this. Make sure the words of power are already on the ground when I go out. 
It takes quite a while for the gray beers to put them down. Dude, it, like, <laughs> it's actually insane. Okay. So he learned. He learned to shout right there. I delayed slightly there before leaving, since clear skies for some reason bugs out. You don't learn it if you go too quickly. So he needs this clear sky shout. Going up on this rock here, so I can jump and talk to Parthenax. That saves about one second over waiting on him to land. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is where you. <laughs> and that weight saves about, it saves one second, it speeds his animation up by two, but the weight itself takes a second, and it also causes a pretty funny sound glitch. <laughs> My guy is breathing fire constantly, so he's, he's getting the word of power, so he now is getting the dragon ring shot, I believe? Oh no, this isn't this isn't Dragon Ren. So after this dialogue with Parthenox, I'll be doing a glitch that lets me use the Elder Scroll anywhere. It's pretty simple. All I'll do is quick save on the time wound, fast travel away, and then load back onto it, and I can use the Elder Scroll wherever I want. It was the camp. which is why I Once Parthenox finally leaves, I'll do it. For some reason he just stands here for like seven seconds. He's supposed to fly away immediately. Okay, so he just yoinked out the swords. He's gonna travel away. So where I'll be using Loads the Elder back. Scroll is at my marriage. Like I said before, failing to attend your marriage enables player control. So by using the Elder Scroll during the marriage, I'll feel to attend it at the same time as I warp to the Dragon Ren cutscene, enabling control in the cutscene. control in the cutscene, which saves a huge amount of time, about two minutes. First thing I'll do is kill this dragon, so the three heroes don't have to. <laughs> Bro, what? The reason I'm fast traveling away is because I can't use quick save or quick load, or wait during the cutscene to skip dialogue, so I might as well do other stuff in the meantime. So he's technically supposed to be inside of a cutscene right now. Dodge the courier right there, I think. Were they? Were the he heroes there, are killing the dragon? Later on in the run, but he just killed it for nice. them, and he's doing other parts of the speed run while here I'll discover Palace of the he's Kings in this later on. When I need to speak to Ulfric Stormcloak. Okay, travels inside. He now has that fast travel point. Dude, this, this, the fact that this has been discovered. I have to go back at this part, otherwise it'll just stay here because I have to learn Dragon Run. Okay, so he gets the Dragon Run. Once he looks at me, I can just fast travel away and back again. And the cutscene will be in its last phase. Okay, so he's using that to skip part of the cutscene. The, the, the I can skip quite a lot here too. First I'll kill Gormlith for Alduin by using a fire shout and then spam E on Hakon and Feldir to skip their dialogue. I get pretty unlucky there. Alduin kind of bugs out and lifts Hakon up, takes ages to kill him, and now he has to turn all the way around to attack Feldir. So he's just helping out to kill them. That's so funny. Very bad luck in this run actually. <laughs> So the cutscene's ending now, I'll just leave and go and skip a bit of dialogue with Balgruf while it's ending. I'll also initiate a mini cutscene between him and his subordinates that lasts about 5 or 6 seconds. And I'll just warp out right as that begins. Dude! one fight now, this is a pretty difficult fight. First I'll favorite and hotkey the three abilities I need for the rest of the run. And then triple dragon around Alduin. Now I'm lining up with his wing here. Using visual cues. That's because his wing does way less damage than any of his other attacks. And now I'm doing oh. infinite power attack. Uh, infinite power attack is where you hold down the two mouse buttons to do a power attack. 
and then quickly single tap them again to create up a standard two-handed attack after the power attack. This confuses the game and it stops the power attack from chaining stamina. Oh yeah, of course! And since I do the fight perfectly, I can finish on a fire shot. Fire shot has no animation, whereas a sword swing animation is about one second. <laughs> Hello, dragon! <laughs> okay. So with Aldo undefeated, I'm going to set up the Peace Council and do the Peace Council. This Dude. is probably the only slow-paced part of the run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be really, really slow. Super slow, dude. Super slow. Come, let's go find dude, that, that voice is just me. Meanwhile, Faringar wants me to go to Bleak Falls so Tower, much. but somewhat beyond that point. When I straight to the... I, uh, okay, so now he's going back in time and he's completing the main quest, like, earlier. Earlier. Now what's this nonsense? <laughs> yeah, so he's already killed Alduin, but now he's Some dialogues. telling like him that he needs to trap him in there. On the last option, like that one. That's so weird, dude. You you were at like it's like the main this quest the first starts here. Time schedule matters. He progresses a little bit. He gets uh, here, progresses this to so like the almost the end, be and then progresses this, this farther. Praying. Oh, sorry, outside. I was talking. It's technically the second fast spot to get him. Uh, he can be right here in front of me, but it's really inconsistent. He used to show up there at 7 a.m. Now he doesn't. Not really sure what's going on. I feared as much. We are not warriors. You misunderstand. Our I see. Part of and now I need to talk to General Tullius. Dude, it seems like he Not has a really hard. fast computer. Him from range before sheathing. Game crashes here, unfortunately. Castle Dur's like a 50% chance to crash on my PC. For some people, it's pretty much a 100% crash. And it loses about three seconds. Pain! Wait, you don't get to not count the crash? That's pain, dude. What? One of the prisoners. Why don't you... I just speak with... And the bump to skip the dialogue is so good, too. My job is to quell this re uh, you, yes. And I'm sure he's picking like the very specific dialogue options to, to basically get as quickly through the cutscene as possible. As quickly through the dialogue, like... I love how some of the guards just blurt out words when you're leaving somewhere or fast traveling somewhere. <laughs> Stop right there, criminal scum! He's a true north. He'll come around. Oh, I remember you. It's about time they turn. I have the empire put in a great deal of can Good. And I doubt the end. Yes. And what was So there's the peace council. If he's not with us. There's the peace council done. He set it up. So he's going back to the very, very top. He's gonna bucket and clip through here again. I wonder why there's not a safe point that's close. I guess every Probably not one on the crash. Uh your inventory position resets when the game crashes, so my inventory should have been on Bucket as soon as I opened it, but it was actually on Amulet of Mara. Oh, from the wedding, you know, that he decided to just skip through and then gain control of a cutscene, kill a dragon in the past, and then set up no, a it's time for the peace, peace console. meeting. I'll do a wait here while standing up so that the standing up animation happens during the console rather than when it's over and I'm free to leave. I'll be using quick save and quick loads to skip their dialogue. As well as some weights to move them around and make them speak sooner. Go, 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 Peace Council. It's like, bro, in this run, you've met how many of these people? So I'm not doing much here, but I still need to stay really focused because how optimally I skip the voice lines is actually pretty important. Uh, if done correctly, you won't hear them say anything. Whereas if you hear an entire word, that's about 0 0.2 lost. <laughs> and if you consider there's probably 60 or 70 voice lines in the console, it can make quite a big difference. 60 times 0.2. And and that's that's what that's the. Also, don't worry. The speedrun speeds up again. Skaldafen and Salvengard are pretty crazy. We're here. Oh, oh oh. This is the one part we haven't found a way to skip yet, and we would really love to. Yeah, I can tell. Speedrunners. Does Alduin come back to life? I'm trying to remember. Does Alduin come back to life, or that you don't actually kill him or something? 
I mean, you would like make his health bar go to zero, but to somewhat skip it by enabling control with the marriage yeah. and going in and out of the doors. Oh. But um, that's slightly faster in real time, but s slower in in-game time. Oh, I see. So it, it, since the run is in in-game time. Bro, I, how do you, like, the timer knows when he's, like, in loading and not loading. I wonder how some that's, uh... Like this one can't be skipped for some reason. <laughs> you, and then just skips it again. Since we're all here. The Dragonborn has spoken. <laughs> Bro, I can see how speedrunners hate this part, because it's, like... Super, super easy. You're just hitting quick save and quick load, but it takes up so much time and you still have to be precise with it. All right. Here we go. He's coming up on the end here. Wait, is he? Oh, wait. Hold, what did Some he say? Skips, they're... Some of the skips, their mouths will keep moving. They'll keep mouthing what they're supposed to be saying, but it still actually saves like one second to skip that dialogue. Okay, anyway. Over. Okay, here we go. You I think it's very by calling the dragon with he's not coming. You I think it's very likely. Ah. Oh, it's giving up Markarth. It's a heavy blow. Now it's time to trap Odoving and get the Skalafen. The the who? I dude, I do not remember anything about this game, man. I mean, I obviously this remember like Dark Brotherhood and stuff like that. Um, like the Mage's Guild, stuff like that, but morning, I do not re be, remember. Like early morning, he'll be eating breakfast at one of these tables, which is a bit closer than his throne, where he spends most of the day, and it's a lot quicker than his sleeping chambers, We're which are ready. in the back of Dragon's Reach. I <laughs> love how he just has the dual wield. I'm going to call Odovink from the inside here. Kind of surprising that that actually works. Oh, Once yeah, the and then updates, you... I'll wait to send the NPCs through. And then, as I open the door, I'll start casting Dragon Rend, so that when I go through the other side, I'll immediately cast it and hit Odevang on his tail. Nice! Easy, Just dude! Just the guard's dead here. If he stays alive, then Odevang will swoop down and grab him again. Once Odevang's HP goes below a certain threshold, he'll start chasing me. Right there. And once he's about halfway towards me, I can just go out and in again, and he'll be trapped. Saving quite a lot of time. <laughs> the lo I think it's the low. Oh my! What? among ourselves. Once he has this door been to lost of ah well. So I'll free Odovang here, and then we have to get him out of his trap. Skip two lines. Wait again, and then he's ready to take me to Skaldafen. I'll tell him to take me before fast traveling away, and this skips the whole cutscene of him flying me off over the mountains. <laughs> Yo, can you now take we're me back here? Fast this one travels is there anyway. One of my favorites. It's all about gaining height, so I go for a really high speed. I'll go sideways since it's better for wiggling to gain height. Yes. And then once I've got enough height, I'll do like a sequence of movements that will put me right beside the portal. <laughs> yes, dude, I First, love. First, I'll go forward into this little alcove here. And then back into the mountain, and then forward into one of these ridges surrounding the portal, where I can then cancel my speed. <laughs> now I'm in Salvengard, where I have one more horse tilt to do. Uh, the reason I don't do it from where I enter is because I'm so high up that I'd have to land in the mountains off to the side, and it ends up being a bit slower. So we're doing Thankfully, another horse tilt here. It's the easiest tilt in the run, so there's not too much chance to choke the run at the end. Dude, that's the other crazy thing. These are all super precise tricks. I just need to make sure I get a really low amount of speed. So I'm doing a lot of pause buffering. And then it's a small area, so I can just quick load. And skim off the side of the hill for fall damage. And then finish as close as possible to soon. One power attack and a fire shot is enough to beat him. Oh! That fire shot was pretty lucky to hit. <laughs> That's pretty easy. That's pretty... Dude, I do not remember this part of the game. No, 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 no. <laughs> I need to go back. Uh, dude, I mean, they have like 18 different versions of it, right? Do they have like an enhanced graphics Skyrim? I got these three heroes. I, I guess that's me. just mods, right? You just you just download mods. I'll just go in and out of the doors to skip their dialogue and advance them through their various states. Yeah, you almost you almost want to be like loading because that means it's not part of your uh, not part of your Been run. here until they come out, and then I just need to go in and out twice more, and they'll be across the bridge. 
I can just go in and out once more, but it's not consistent. Sometimes they'll get stuck in the bridge and it's not worth it. And he's out. And they should be back in position. Dude, that's crazy. That's literally, literally crazy. That you can manipulate Hi these there. guys as much. Q Panda, how do you know that I'm recording a video? For all you know, you could have just donated when that this happened last time. You're the same person. What the heck, Q Panda? Nobody, nobody, sh nobody shot him out of the comments. I guess. <laughs> Fog fight. Uh-huh. Big fog fight right here. After this last clear skies, I'll go and get into position for dragon rending Alduin. I'll know when to skip the last two voice lines, as the Venmo reek text at the bottom will disappear. Now I'm getting into position to dragon rend him as soon as he spawns. I can't actually look at the spawn location or it'll change, so I'm hiding behind this bit of rock here. <laughs> and then as soon as the quest marker updates, I can peek around and dragon rend him. Bro, he's literally spawn killing Alduin. I'll be doing infinite power attack again in this fight. I also have to dragon rend him in the game, otherwise he stops taking damage. And with oh, the help look. of the three heroes for this fight, it's much easier than the first one. And timing ends on the final hit on Alduin. This death scene is awesome no matter how many times I see it. happy with this run. Uh, <laughs> I only made about 10 or 15 seconds of mistakes, which is crazy good, but I did lose about 30 seconds to bad luck. But there's nothing I can do about that. Dude, it's so but Anyway, casual. thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the commentary and find it informative. Uh, coming up, I'm currently running an all guilds run, and I'll be doing a commentary of that as well. And I'm also making a horse tilting tutorial, so if you're curious how the horse tilting glitch works, be sure to check that out. But other than that, take it easy, everyone, and I'll see you later. He <laughs> just pickpocketed the guy, had him swing at him, accidentally hit the other guy, and then he just has all the heroes battle this guy for fun. Bro, that is literally one of the, like, weirdest... Oh, my God. <laughs> literally one of the weirdest games... Uh, the speed runs I've ever seen, but probably some of the coolest tricks ever. Like, literally some of the coolest tricks ever. That was so entertaining to watch, man. Uh, does, does he literally just have these guys brawl? <laughs> they're shouting him out while they're all fighting. Okay, I, th I think that's a good place to end it. I think that's a good place to end it. Okay, yeah, no, this is a really good place to end it. That's that's actually a perfect place to end it. Anyway, uh, thank you all. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you all for tuning in. Stop, stop, make it stop, please. <laughs> and he's dead and there it is and that's how the dragon board died anyway there it is ladies and gentlemen boys and girls the entire game of skyrim in literally i uh, like faster than it took me to get out of the main dungeon at the very beginning man that was absolutely incredible that was actually absolutely incredible Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, uh, make sure you leave a like. Let me know in the comments down below what you want me to react to next in terms of speedruns, uh, what game, what category, etc., etc. But that being said, I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.